early on while we were starting to build an adventure together. We created a rough doodle map where we planned out the encounters and the terrain that the player characters were going to encounter. After going through and just deciding what the adventuring day would consist of for encounter locations, how far out they were going to be spread, it's time to put a bow on it, make this map good enough for player handouts. Generally I use a few different tools, but we're doing this one fairly quick and I did speed up the video so this is not real time. But I have a good piece of parchment that has some good characteristics to it. Lining it out and just kind of getting a lay of the land. Drawing in the features that we're going to put in. We know based on the doodle that we're going to have a river crossing some mountains, hills, swamp area. So it's just about laying out those details just in pencil so I can get a good gauge of scale and size, start plotting out where things are gonna be. Putting in some hills here, a roadway for where the players have previously traveled. And after putting in some decorative touches, we'll go through and start to ink. But this is just a quick map that we'll include in our adventure. Just a decorative piece that could be used as a player handout if you are following along and creating a map of your own. And something that I initially had thought about including in the videos, but they were getting so long I wanted to keep this separate. And that way people who are just looking at how I make maps can kind of follow along. Again, this one isn't going to be super detailed. Just a quick little map. We do maps on commission. If you are interested, make sure to leave a comment and we'll reach out to you. Or you can hit us up on our email and we do maps for all different types of genres. We have all different grades of parchment and dyed paper that we can use. Normally with the pens I use, I have four different types of pens so I can vary the terrain based on what we need, as well as some colored pens and colored pencils and watercolors, so all different kinds of maps. Here, just laying in this rushing river and giving it a little bit of detail so you can quickly determine that it's water versus a roadway. Of course, we put in the bridge that the players will be expected to cross. Even though the bridge in our adventure is not going to be an easy just walk across bridge, we do have to have the bridge location so that they can see the path they're going to be taking. Again, I'm going to plan this to be able to be used for a player handout so that the players have a good general idea. Since this is their home region anyhow, they should have a good idea of what the land is around their hometown. And now that we've got the river with the bridge laid in, it's time to just start putting in mountains with the mountain ranges. I'm going to put in a couple of different styles, just starting with the ridge line and then working out the shadow areas, mark in where the peaks are, then we'll go through and fill in more detail once we get these established and set. We know we want this to be kind of a bottleneck, so these mountains are going to be pretty rugged and really hugging the river area and the more details we add the more kind of rugged they begin to appear and this is probably one of the longer processes in the map making is all of the detail work that you put in again we're not going for a high quality map just a quick put together map that'll go with our adventure so that our players have a good sense of the area. 
with the amount of detail that we want to put into the maps. It really determines how long the map is going to take and how much time we want to spend on the map. Because this map is going to be a part of the adventure that we can hand out to the players, we want to have it fairly well detailed. So with these mountains, just putting in a lot of ridge lines and rough looking terrain, just so that in a quick glance the players can see that traversing these ranges, trying to get around the path that we've kind of laid out with the encounters is going to be more time consuming and not work to meet the kind of timeline that we want them to take getting to Offelheim in the village. So just putting in borders for our characters in this adventure. That way we can still keep them on script and follow the encounter building that we laid out. And just creating some choke points to steer them in the right direction. These type of mountain ranges I base off of the Wind River mountain ranges in that there are several different ridges that kind of converge. And with my maps I really try to put in some of this detail just to keep the map interesting. I want the players to be able to look it over and find details each and every time they're looking at it. So lots of different detail in the different ranges that hopefully as a whole they'll mesh together really well but you can spend quite a bit of time just studying the map. For me that's something I really enjoy with any type of map making and cartography. It's just looking at the details that are in the depictions on the paper. So I really like being able to add in quite a bit. And after we finish popping in all of these mountain ranges, the separate ranges, we're going to start putting in foothills because they can't go from mountains just to flat plains. So once we get our ridge lines all detailed out, and again this is at very high speed, so much longer process. But we're going to just start putting in some foothills and showing that there is a progression from these mountains kind of to the riverbank and then up into the plains on the upper part of the map. And some standalone mountains. We want to again show that there's lots of topography in this area and that it's pretty rough terrain. After our foothills, which we know we're going to have some encounters, we want to start putting in some swampy areas. So those I'm going to mark up and we want to have differentiation from the foothills and the swamps. So roughing through everything. We're also going to start spreading out those swamp areas. Highlighting the road here. We want the players to be able to see that they could have come from a couple of different directions to get to the inn, which we will have near a forest. So we're already getting a lot of different topography. And if you wanted to expand on this adventure, they can explore the forests, they can explore different mountain ranges and fields. Plenty of opportunity to expand on the initial adventure. Here we're going to go through and just start getting ready to label locations in the map. Things that the players again will know having been from the region their characters will be familiar with and starting with the waypoint the inn that they're going to stay with just playing with some size and ink it in 
and right there is going to be the starting location of the Green Oaks Inn. I'll lay that out on the map and they'll be able to tell that's the starting point. Now we're going to make the village the end point where they'll confront Offelheim. Pop in some buildings so that we know it's an actual village or a town. We don't want it to be too big. So this is kind of a rural area in the hills, in the mountains. They probably live off the river and maybe some mining. So kind of a off the beaten path, small town living that our player characters have as their hometown. And then we're going to label in the areas, the hills, and the swamps because everything deserves a good name. So we'll actually name the swamp and the hills. And that way again it just brings more realism into the game aid and the players have more details to draw from. We're also going to put in some names of the passes between these mountain ranges. Again this will allow you to use hooks for further adventures based off of this primary adventure. And I think every adventure should have an opportunity to expand and grow and get a life of its own. Especially when it's run by different GMs. They should be able to put their own spin on it and take it in different directions that suit their table. So just a little more details into the swamps and the hills down into the river. We want to have this kind of cliffy so that again the players aren't trying to look for ways around a path of least resistance to get to the village. We want to make sure that they know that the path in front of them that we've already planned that they don't know about is the best path. So we'll actually put an old roadway in here as well that they know they can follow to get home or to destinations further on. And just because this is a fun map we're making, we're going to go through and have some decorative touches added on. Just continuing to give it good detail and have it be unique and different from anything else that's out there because we're using it for our adventure. And a nice compass rose and we'll start detailing the map out. We're just going to put in some of our own logos and ideas here. So we'll put in our Green Oaks Gaming logo in one corner and a detail of the acorn and leaf in our logo in another and again just making this kind of fun details that any cartographer does when they're doing maps they have their own little twists and details that they put in this is no different so just fun little things again that the players can enjoy when they're looking at the map and again it gives it uniqueness and makes it all our own. And that's our map. Hope you enjoy.